This is Entrepreneurs Get Visible, the podcast for people who want more impact, influence, and income. I'm Anna Parker Naples, and I'll be sharing with you proven methods from leading entrepreneurs that help you get visible as an authority in your field. Because anything's possible when you get visible. Today on Entrepreneurs Get Visible, we're talking about how video can help you to make money while you sleep. And this is not just some catchphrase. This is something that this particular lady absolutely helps people to do and it has transformed her life and her business. But before we go there, I want you to know a little bit about the special event that I've got going on called Get Visible Live, where today's guest is going to be one of my amazing speakers. She's going to be talking to you about how to be camera confident and how to use video to get yourself out there. But we're also going to be talking about how to get yourself in the press with a very special guest. We're going to be talking about how you improve your content so that you bring the right clients to you. We're going to be talking all about the power of podcasting. And we're going to be talking about how you can get your finances in order so that you can be that little bit braver with putting yourself out there. So I am very excited about Get Visible Live. If you want to come, which of course you do, you need to head over and buy a ticket. Early bird tickets have already sold out, so don't hang around on this one. Make sure you head over to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get dash visible dash live or click on the link in the show notes and grab yourself a ticket before they sell out. So today... Who am I bringing to you? My wonderful, wonderful guest today. This is one of those people that when we met, we just clicked. And you're going to hear in today's episode exactly how we met and that that first conversation and how that went. Today, we are talking with a video strategist who helps people to share video and create great content. In fact, I believe she is Britain's best person at this right now. And when you hear a little bit more about her incredible backstory, you'll understand why I say that. She's a columnist for Psychologies and is now a founder, a director of a new venture with both Psychologies magazine and another with one of Britain's top bloggers, Honest Mum. This lady has worked in production and in journalism, broadcast journalism and reporting for over 20 years. She has an incredible story to share with us today. And she has worked with some Hollywood A-listers and even Barack Obama. This lady has worked with a president. So I'm really excited today to bring to you the incredible Lucy Griffiths. So today's episode, I'm really genuinely excited about and smiling quite a lot because we've been laughing off mic. I am joined by the amazing Lucy Griffiths. And what's what's even more amazing is that we actually connected for the very first time. This is another one of my previous guests on my first podcast, which at the time was Inspiring Mummy Club. And when Lucy and I connected on that podcast, we just got on. We got on like a house on fire. And that episode was raw, wasn't it, Lucy? So I'm going to let you come on now and introduce yourself tell us a bit about that and a little bit about your version of how we first met (laughs) so when Anna and I first met on the podcast we really clicked um but I think also I had not really talked about my sort of issues with motherhood and I, I had a really traumatic birth and I had major incontinence issues and all of these things that really had halted my plans for my previous career and all this kind of thing. And so when I first talked to Anna on this, I was sobbing. So the podcast is like me crying. It was like a therapy session of me crying and being really raw about how it had affected me. And basically that was the moment that propelled me to set up a business. And so Anna and I really connected at a very sort of really deep personal level. But then we both were in the sort of mummy space, Mm -hmm. but really were meant to do something different. And it's so wonderful to see Anna where she's like, as you know, flourishing in this amazing podcasting space and is so brilliant and kick-ass at it and exactly where she's meant to be. And in the same way, I was sort of in the mummy space, but my previous career was as a TV reporter and I was a journalist who had 20 years experience in radio and TV. And I'd had two years experience of being a mother. And, you know, and it was like, I was ignoring this massive chunk of my life. And I had to suddenly, I had a light bulb moment of what on earth are you doing? And, you know, had to then sort of reframe myself in thinking in terms of video and giving people 
ways to to get the confidence to put themselves out there. And I, uh, you can see why Lucy and I resonate on so many things. So uh, Lucy now, in my opinion, is the leading figure really in in how to really make YouTube and camera work well for you. And it's been amazing to watch your journey grow and develop. Now, we're going to make sure that that episode from two years ago, only two years ago, that we recorded, that's going to be in the show notes if you want to go and hear both of us having a little bit of a weep um, as Lucy kind of unraveled on my podcast. And what I want to say about that, Lucy, is that that actually became, for Inspiring Success podcast, the, the most downloaded episode. And I have, I still have people message me to say what an incredible what an incredible episode it was because it resonates with them and not just mothers, people who have been through something and it's changed them and they don't really know whether that's physical or it's mental. And often in the entrepreneurial space, we talk about the power of story with the power of connection. And that's really what that episode was about. So yeah, delighted to have you back on. And what we're going to be talking about today for those of you listening is is how video can make you money while you sleep. Now, this sounds like a trite kind of let's pull them in title for SEO. However, this is actually what Lucy and me have done within the last couple of years. Uh, But I I think what Lucy is now offering and helping people to do and will be helping people to do further is just incredible. So talk through what your business looks like right now. What are you doing in your business? So I'm going to rewind to 12 months ago. So 12 months ago, I was helping people with video. I was, I had a course, I had a group program and I was doing one-on-ones with people. And I was actually run ragged. I was trying to do lots of people's videos, film them. And I was, so I was servicing lots of clients like on a um, Zoom calls, plus also going to events and filming events. And I was also trying to juggle my son who has um, issues with autism and it was just too much to, to cope with everything. I was trying to, to manage everything and really flailing and was finding myself surviving on sort of five hours sleep and just exhausted and run ragged. And a turning point came when I actually had a client who taught people how to use Facebook ads and he had an agency where he basically had eight, um, Facebook ads that sold courses. And the first session I had with him of him learning to be camera confident, I went downstairs to my husband. I said, oh my God, I need to do this. It was like January, 2019. And from that moment, that was like, wow, okay, this is what I'm doing. And so I created four courses. So stripped back my original course. And I created a $9 course, which is called um, Confident on Camera. And that was the major turning point. So people see a Facebook ad or they see um, my YouTube videos or my Pinterest, and they're then driven to this one particular landing page. They will then buy that course because it's $9. It's a no brainer. And then they're upsold into different courses at different price points. And so then, you know, courses on scaling on YouTube or also then more technical, how to edit using video. And so essentially from that, I've sold 20,000 courses and I wake up every morning and I have $3,000 in my Stripe account and I am making money while I sleep. And the back of being seen everywhere. So the model that we use, we use a lot of Facebook ads. So it means that we're plowing money back into Facebook ads from the sales. And we're sort of getting paid to get paid basically by reusing that model. And it meant that thousands of people have bought the course. And it meant that really big names like the founder of Kiki K or Psychologies Magazine have like approached me about things. And so from that, it basically, it transpired. Psychologies wanted to do something and I'm now in the process of building. I've, uh, we had to take it to the Psychologies board and it took months to kind of, but literally this week we filmed them and we will start, the business goes live within the next sort of six weeks or so. So that's Psychologies Magazine for any listeners, but perhaps um, abroad. Psychologies Magazine is the UK's leading personal development magazine for women. It's a fantastic magazine. I absolutely love it. And it's, it's amazing to watch that. That's going to flourish really, that joint venture. 
Yes. So essentially with that, so Psychologist Magazine, you know, they've got 1.3 million followers on Facebook, you know, a massive platform. And so for me to, you know, me from my spare room, my bedroom, I literally was having meetings with you know, the CEO of the board that owns the company that owns Psychologies magazine, and they have over a hundred titles. So if I crack Psychologies, there's a hundred magazine titles that I can also do the same thing for. So this is the power of visibility. But what I want to take you back to was now that you've done that, now that you've, you've changed that and you're making that level of money from things you've already created, what has that changed for you and your family? So my husband stopped working last year, as in stopped working in the city. He now supports me. He's very much involved in the business. He was... He just took your bowl of soup away as well. So he's on hand when he's busy. He definitely cooks lunch. And, you know, it just frees you up that you can... We spent six weeks over the summer. We spent six weeks in Spain. So we, we can just have a much more flexible life. All of our income streams are now passive income, whether it's we have um, Airbnb properties or whether it's selling my courses or these joint ventures, they will all feed into the 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 pot of money that's that's our that's our income strategies. And so yeah, it's amazing having my husband around because he's you know, he doesn't know anything about the online world, but he does know about business and he does know about accounting and stuff like that. So actually he's like the money man. So I can just be creative and do do what I like. I can do the fun stuff and he can do the boring stuff that I don't like doing, Um, (laughs) but he loves doing. (laughs) Brilliant. So then for someone who has maybe done a few videos or thought about it and they've not gone so well, they're not really pleased with the results. How would you advise someone to really improve that area? Because there's nothing worse is that you get you get yourself psyched up. You're going to do a video because you know video works and then you do it and it's rubbish and you look really stilted and it's not flowing. Where does someone go from there? So the thing with video is that everybody hates seeing themselves on camera, particularly in the beginning. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And so practice, practice, practice. It's not in the beginning, don't watch yourself, just do it mm. and then do it consistently and say to yourself, I'm going to do it for the next 21 days and just c- consistently do it. The other thing to say is that I work with some really big level influencers and they also don't like seeing themselves on camera. You know, it's a natural thing that we we all look at our imperfections. We look at, you know, our wrinkles, our gray hair, our, you know, bags under our eyes, whatever it may be. And we think, oh, I'm not good enough. And all of those stories that we tell ourselves, they still resonate. But even if you're fearful, you just have to say, oh, I don't like doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm. And that's the thing that you have to just say, I'm going to do it anyway. And step out of your own way and do it. I think um, as well, it's remembering that the video isn't really about you. This always helps me. The video is not yeah. about you. It's about what result you're giving somebody else. That helps me massively with any yeah. content I put out. This isn't really about me. It's, okay, it's my hair might not be perfect, but what am I giving them? What's the value? And if you yeah. leave with that, it does become easier. It's- Definitely. And it's, it is always about the giving. So it's what do they need? What do your clients need to hear from you and how you can give? And when you feel like, oh, I'm sharing the story because they need to hear it, it becomes easier to talk about something because it's like, oh, people need to hear this. And you know, that phrase can sound really trite and obvious, but at the same time, what do your clients really, you know, what learning, what thing has gone wrong? What did you get from this? And when you start having those conversations with yourself, it's easier to put yourself out there. One of the things that I've seen about the top of your funnel is that really, in order to have that fully automated, you're driving the sales through video yourself. Of course, because you have to demonstrate your expertise. But what I notice about that is that that draws you in. That As a consumer, you you want to engage, you want to find out more. How did you find really consciously having to create recorded video that was sales orientated? So I am, so, and Anna and I have talked about this before, that I am not someone who likes selling. And this was a major stumbling block for me in my business because I really, it's not my, I still hate it. In fact, I was 
I had a one-to-one client the other night and she is, she knows I don't like selling. She's someone who I worked with last year and she's come back for more. And and when I did this kind of sales bit and I talked about money, she after she put her hands up, I went, yes. <laughs> I was like, Lucy did sales. And, so, and that sort of shows the journey that I've been on about doing sales. It's um, funny, we were, we were laughing off, 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 off stage. You can tell I'm an actor. Yes. We were laughing before we came live that actually we see people out there at the early stages of their journey who are creating businesses where they're never going to make money. And Lucy and I would, I would say neither of us are actually money, money driven. That isn't really what we're all about. Yeah. However, we both understand that we do want lifestyles that are great. And that if we have that, it creates so much more ability to reach more people with whatever we're trying to share and share our expertise. But ultimately, if you're not able to drive sales, you're not going to have a successful business. And that's, I think that's a missing key that um, I see at very early stage businesses and, and entrepreneurs and coaches missing. And it's a vital part of the component. And I can say that because I used to miss this point too, because I just wanted to reach people. But you can't reach people if you can't help them because they won't purchase. So yeah, it just all kind of feeds into each other. It does totally. And yeah, I was terrible at doing the sales component. And I still, it is definitely my area that is my sort of area of weakness, if we were to put it that way. It's the thing that I struggle with. But when you sell on video, you do it once and then you sell to thousands of people. And so it was not an easy journey for me, but I learned how to script my videos and I refine them and I tweak them. And I probably have for my courses, I probably have five or six different videos because I've kind of tweaked it. I've learned more. I've refined that way of selling. But once you crack it, then it means that you sell that course. You set yourself up as an expert. Mm. And it means also when you have the discovery calls with people, you don't need to sell in the same way. Or even the voice in your head that tells you, you should be selling, you should be selling. That voice goes away because you've already done the selling. And so you just have a nice chat with someone when it comes to the discovery call. So it just makes everything so much easier if you can sell. I do actually have a course called Sell on Camera because I think it's because we'll put it in the show notes as well to make sure you guys find it's it. Actually it's such a, a thing that lots of people struggle with, but there is absolutely a way that you can do it really without having all of that stress. And because you script it, then it means it's done. See for me, it's bizarrely given that I'm an actor when I have to script my own words, I just I, that just makes me stumble and I'll worry. I'm thinking more, am I going to get the words right? Am I going to get that right? Than actually delivering. And one of the things that I much prefer live video, and if you said, right, you need to go on live and you need to sell from a lot, I'm fine with that. <laughs> the minute I know that, oh my gosh, this is going to go out to thousands and they can watch it back again. And I, that as a mindset piece, I know that that's one of the things that I have to battle with doesn't mean I don't do it, but I'm aware that is a stumbling block. And I think that will probably be the same for a lot of our listeners as well. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? This thing of, you know, what makes us fearful about sales. Mm. And I definitely have, I've had NLP for it. I've done various things in order to overcome my fears. But at the end of the day, you find a strategy that works for you because ultimately your business is not going to work unless you are selling. Mm -hmm. And it's many of us want to give, many of us are in a giving space that we want, we're coaches or we, we want to be giving to people. And we feel like if we're giving and we share our expertise and we put out Facebook posts, people will come. Not always. Mm -hmm. Um, And, but that's a hard lesson for many people to learn. So now that you have this very strong automated sequence with you know, your Facebook ads and the videos that then go into the courses. Are you doing as many social media posts or has that changed for you? So my system of social media is all focused around my YouTube. So my YouTube videos, that becomes like the sharing point for my, that's the cornerstone of my social media posting. And then from that, then I have people who chop up those videos and they share those videos and they post but it all comes from the one cornerstone of YouTube. But at the same time, you know, that is automated. Mm. And so I do do it, but I don't have to do it in the same way. 
And I look at so many people who feel on the hamster wheel of social media, where you have to be posting and commenting on posts in Facebook and being engaged in various groups and posting something and hoping you'll get some engagement. And will that engagement lead to sales or all of those little stories that I used to have with myself on a constant basis and all of that stuff that I thought I had to do in order to drive sales. It was complete nonsense. Actually, if you're off the hamster wheel and you're focused on creating a mechanism and automation to sell while you sleep, then that does the talking for you. So what I want you to know is, as as, as those of you listening, as I'm talking to Lucy about this, she's so genuine that she's created this for herself. And we were in conversation before Lucy took the leap when she was looking at thinking about investing heavily in order to learn how to do this and partner with someone to teach her how to do this, knowing that in order to put the time, effort and attention into doing this, you were going to have to stop your income from one part of your business in order to build this. Talk us through what was going through your head at that point. So at the time I was dealing with, they were very successful coaches, influencers who I was filming their events and I was doing lots of, I was a service-based business. And so I was doing their, managing their YouTube channels and managing their posting on Facebook and all of that stuff. And if you're in that space where you're you're a service-based business, you know that you are trading time for money. And very often I would find myself, and as I've said before, I'm not great with money. And so I would always get my husband to kind of like help me with the quotes. I'd sort of say, shall I charge, let's say, shall I charge a thousand pounds? And then he'd look at it and go, no, you should charge 2000 pounds because actually it's going to take you longer than you think and blah, blah, blah. And so that's how I would sort of start out. And I think, and my husband would have costed in a profit for me, but then something would always happen and I'd end up where the profit had disappeared and I'd spent double the hours doing the thing. Mm -hmm. And, And it was just happening on such a regular basis. And, you know, I was just thinking, what am I doing? I'm slaving away and it's not working. You know, I'm making money, but I can't scale. I can't focus on growing my business because I'm so busy growing their businesses. And that was where I was at. I was sort of in this, you know, when you first start out in business, you are desperate for clients. Then you get clients and you're getting them. But actually, I was so busy growing their business that I wasn't doing mine. Well, I found in the past that I've got so busy with one-to-ones that I, there's no room to breathe. And then it becomes stressful. And the idea of going out and getting more clients and being visible in order to get more clients when you think, actually, I don't want this because this isn't working for me. And what you're really talking about is, you know, moving from, it's everyone says the phrase, moving from one to one to really one to many and a lot of many. Yes. And so I knew I had to do this and I was still juggling both things. And so it did mean a lot of like really, you know, 2 a.m., working till 2am many, many evenings. And I was so exhausted, but we got it over the line, did it and it launched and it launched in June. And almost immediately I was like, oh my God, it's- I bought it. $9, it's nothing. Not even going to notice that. And that's what everybody thinks. Yes. And that's exactly what happened. And so, and then you upsell them into other things and there you go. And then- The thing is that, so that's with Facebook ads, but also if you're then using organic strategies, so if you've got a good following on YouTube, for example, or on Pinterest, you can do exactly the same thing, but you're pushing them organically. And so you're not paying for the Facebook ads. So what you're selling is pure profit. Do you monetize your YouTube? So yeah, so I sell through my YouTube channel. So So that's money while you sleep. That is money while I sleep. So that is a major driver of people who, and it, you know, it is selling like on the videos where I'm talking about camera confidence, I'm pushing the course, Mm -hmm. but on other videos, I might be talking about, let's say passive income, or I'm talking about how to build a quiz or whatever it may be. I talk about lots of different topics in my YouTube channel about growing an online business. Mm. And in doing that, I am then saying, oh, you can check out my freebie below. You check out the freebie, then you're on the list, then you go to the webinar, and then 
through you go and before you know it, you've bought a course. And so and it's $9 and you actually think you got a bargain and you're quite excited by that because, hey, everyone loves a bargain, right? <laughs> and so all of that feeds in. Mm. And so, that you know, that's a definite driver. And as my YouTube channel grows, that will be the way that I push things even more. How long does it take you to create the whole system and the courses? Because these were new courses. You had the ideas of the teachings. Yes. About two and a half months to kind of really let out. Two and a half months to go from a course idea through to actually selling. Because the course creation, you can do that fairly quickly if you are motivated and you do it, you go share your stuff. But you then need to do the funnels, the sales copy, all of that stuff in order to to then sell the courses through the funnel and then do the email sequencing to drive all of that as well. One of the things we were talking about earlier, we had a great chat off air. Why didn't we record that? Maybe because some of it was a little bit personal. We were talking about increasingly people who are not experts in their field being experts in their field. And what I love about Lucy is that she has an incredible backstory. We all have a history. She has an incredible history in, in camera work. So just briefly, just talk through what that looked like for you. What was your previous career and how that feeds into your knowledge and expertise now? So I started in, I have 20 years experience in working in radio and television, started in local newspapers, moved into local radio, and then worked in TV and mainly international TV. So I did, I worked for major broadcasters, US broadcasters and like people like the BBC. And had really exciting roles working mainly abroad and did things like I set up a TV station in North Korea. And, you know, this was the first Western news agency in North Korea. And so it was pretty full on to set up that. And that actually was the reason that I ended up on TV because at the time there were very, very few journalists in North Korea. And I was going in once a month for a week and I happened to be in at a time when Kim Jong-il had done some nuclear thing and I basically was the only Western journalist in the country. And it meant that my bosses from New York rang me up and said, right, we need you on TV. And I honestly was sick in the toilet. I, you know, it was, it was definitely not, so I'm an introvert. I am happy to kind of help everyone else do their thing. You had never planned to go on camera. Never. I didn't understand that about your journey. That's really interesting. I love that. Never, ever, I never motivated to be on camera. I'm not a, I'm not someone who wants to be center of attention at all. So I did it and I talked about nuclear processes and young beyond the nuclear plant. And I managed to say all the words I needed to say and not screw up and not get killed by the North Koreans. Well, and, um, well <laughs> and that was it. That was kind of, and then they said, you know, and actually they were like, you were great and you look good on camera. You were fine. What are you talking about? You can do it again. And so it then became, you know, I was talking regularly on things like NBC, CNN about North Korea from that you know, we got that project up and running and I was then running the China, North Korea region, let's say. So it was like Northeast Asia and I had a really big role, but I was, you know, hitting the end of my thirties and knew that I wanted to have kids and I wanted to settle down and my life didn't fit in that. Mm. So I ended up moving back to the UK for a boyfriend. It didn't work out. And I basically got offered a job in Iraq, went off to Iraq set up a TV station in Iraq. As I think she just casually drops this in. <laughs> okay. And um, this is the thing, when you have real experience and expertise, it can be casual because <laughs> this is just your history. It's not. <laughs> and from that, I basically, oh, and I was, I then met my husband and I was also covering, so I was wor- working as a TV reporter and I was covering the conflict in Ukraine. And I was sort of taking my folic acid, covering the conflict, thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be like, you know, dealing with Russian rebels who are taking me hostage and all that kind of stuff. She just drops that in. Yeah. She did just say, she talks a lot more about that on the other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she just casually mentioned being taken yes. hostage. I mean, honestly, I, I just love you, Lucy. I think you're fabulous. How that will just, so you, you're in this horrendous situation. With- and 
B company. <laughs> so that was when I basically thought, okay, I've got to do something different. When I had my son, the plan was for me to go back, but I then had really terrible incontinence and there was no way I could go and do what I was doing and need the toilet regularly and without peeing my pants. And so that was where I sort of stumbled into the online world, really not knowing what I was doing. And, you know, first of all thought, oh, let's talk about motherhood. And um, <laughs> we're laughing. We're both laughing so hard here. And, you know, <laughs> and ended up doing that, but really feeling like I feel a bit stunted because, you know, I've done things like interviewed Barack Obama or have breakfast with Hillary Clinton, but I didn't feel like I could talk about those things Mm -hmm. while I was talking about motherhood. And while I love being a mother, I adore it. But at the same time, that was like two years of my life and I was missing the other. What's your son now? Here's a son you have. He's five. Well, turning five soon, so four now. I love it. So all of this incredible journey you've been on has actually only been in the last five years. Yes. Wowzers. It is amazing. Four years, really, four years. Yeah. Four years. Uh, It is amazing. Okay. So, normally when I'm rounding up these interviews, I say to people, uh, my question is, what are the three things you would say if someone wanted to get visible? But I think actually it's much deeper than that for you. If someone's in that situation where, you know, they're feeling like their content isn't quite good enough and they're not getting the money that they want, what advice would you give them? I think really go within and what is your excellence? What is that thing? And very often, both Anna and I have been through this. It is staring you right in the face. It's the elephant in the room that you're ignoring Mm -hmm. and you're thinking, oh, I could teach social media or I could teach this, but actually you have something that's your excellence Mm -hmm. and focusing on that and going for it. Yeah. And Oh God, we just laugh because our journeys, obviously, over, even the last two years since we've known each other, we've both just really narrowed down on what we're doing and just owned our spaces. But we got it wrong for a while. Not wrong because it was an important for both of us, important part of the journey. But it's working out as well. For me, what I'm doing now, it's about deciding like how big I'm going to play as well. I think that plays a part. Absolutely. Yes. And and I think that's maybe why we kind of click is that we both know in our own fields, we're incredible women f- from before. So when you're bringing that into a new space, but you can't work out the mechanisms that can feel very frustrating. Yes. And yet it doesn't take a lot of learning. It doesn't take a lot of knowledge. It just takes focus, dedication and commitment to change things around financially. And as as we were saying, we're not financially driven, either of us. I'm sure we have our own targets and goals, but actually you can help more people and you can have more impact if you allow yourself to make the money by taking that time to invest in the first place. Yeah, I mean, amazing, amazing, Lucy. It's been so good to talk to you. So, okay, so that thing then, go within, think about it, trust yourself, trust your backstory, trust your experience that you're bringing to the table. For me, I used to have, we're talking about this off air, I used to have some really high profile entrepreneurs and coaches message me to say, I'm thinking about doing this podcast and I'm a bit annoyed about this audio, what do you think? And I would give them detailed information about, you need to think about this, you need to think about this, don't do this, oh, don't worry about that, contact this person, this is the equipment you need. And I would literally reel it off without even thinking. And it didn't, the penny didn't drop at all that actually how you get that message out there is my zone of genius. In the same way that with Lucy, Lucy has been teaching some of the most phenomenal people around the world, like how to be on screen. So it absolutely makes sense that she is the one who's then reaching the masses to teach people this stuff. So it's exciting. And I think watching where you go, and also what we were talking about as well earlier was that because you have the freedom in this business now, it's actually given you more freedom for other things, hasn't it? And joint ventures and partnerships. Yeah. And that's it. That once you set up these automated processes, this is work. This is sometimes boring. You know, there have been tears. There have been stresses. Mm-hmm. It is when people talk about passive income, it is high stress and lots of work. I'm not going to lie about this. 
But once you have those systems and processes in place that flow and work, then it works. That makes you money to free you up to do the other stuff. Mm. And I am just literally pressing go this week, fingers crossed, on a new project, a new joint venture. And I'll be then, I am slightly exhausted about this because I'm going to be doing another one that basically launches in about six weeks time. Same thing. But that is literally then three businesses up and running. Automated. Fourth, if I also look at Airbnbs and they're all passive income Mm. and they're all, I don't really have to get involved on the granular level. I'm looking at just, you know, big picture strategy and looking ahead. Mm, Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Lucy. We're going to make sure that in the show notes, we have that what would you say, infamous episode, but also that you can get links to Lucy's courses and find out exactly how it works and just be a fly on the wall on her nine pound, nine dollars, not even pounds, a nine dollar course. So thank you so much for coming today, Lucy. Thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure to catch up and you are so incredible. I'm so excited by your journey. I really am. And I'm so thrilled because Anna had an elephant staring at her that was do a podcast. And I remember like thinking like, do one. Do, and I was so thrilled when she started teaching podcasting. I can't tell Just you. Just took me a while for the penny to drop. And also it was that credibility thing. My previous podcast, although it was doing well, because I felt disconnected from the message and how it started, I didn't promote it in the way that I could have done. So I didn't grow the audience as fast because I wasn't passionate about it. And I knew that if I was going to teach anything, I knew I wanted to teach how to do it well and have the credibility. And so I knew that if I was going to teach people podcasting, I didn't just want a show that was nice. I wanted a podcast that packed an international punch. And that's what Entrepreneurs Get Visible does. So we have followers. I think it's 72 countries now. And we've got quite a big American audience. Hello to those of you across the pond. Lots in Canada. We are right now number one in Bulgaria. So, you know... Who knew that that was something I was going to achieve in my life? And I knew that I wanted whatever I do, if I'm going to do it, I want, not that I have to be the best. I have to know that I can get my content to within that that credibility. I'm struggling for the words, but you you know what I mean? Because this is exactly the same for you, Lucy. You don't want to do something and be a little bit, I haven't got the right words that are polite words. I'm struggling. I'm hoping this is making sense. Hearted about it. Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure that whatever I put out there is great quality content and that really matters to me. But what I do want to leave you with, what I do want to leave you with is I have an event, Get Visible Live, which is happening on the 20th of June. And I am delighted to tell you that Lucy is one of my very special, specially handpicked speakers who's coming on. I have picked some fabulous people who I really get, who get me, who get what I'm doing, who are really, again, passionate about helping people stand out and get out there and build their businesses and actually at core have businesses that mean something to them because I think that's quite important. So if you want to find out about coming, you absolutely need to get your ticket and again the link will be in the show notes so that is get visible live on the 20th of june and you'll get to see me and you'll get to see lucy so what else do you need to know about it it's just an absolute no-brainer so we hope to see you there take care thank you for listening to entrepreneurs get visible to get your free checklist on how to raise your profile and to find out about our community go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get visible